We're now headed through Commodore Passage. And it's kind of tight. And it's going to get narrow. And it's going to get shallow. We've never done this before, so we're going to see how this works. And if it's something we don't want to do again, we'll go around next time. Right, babe? Right. Join us on the Elliott as we realize our five-year plan with the kids. Grown up, moved out, graduated from college. We take the dog, sold everything, and kitted out the boat so we can cruise the Pacific Northwest all while living and working in the heart of Seattle. New adventures and new passages. So we'll see how this goes and see what the captain thinks. What do you think, Captain? How was it? That was actually pretty cool. It was super deep. Uh, the charts obviously made it look like it was a little, a little shallower, but it, you know, it's tight. Charts can be manipulated. Yeah, that, that did afford us another 15 feet. That was fun, and we were able to go right by Silva Bay Marina, where Havana posted up yeah. earlier as well. We'll so, meet them up there. Now we're catching up. Across the Strait of Georgia. Here we go. It's like a bathtub. You never see this. So it's a lifetime event. Hopefully twice when we come back across as well. But we'll see. The only thing is there is uh, debris. You gotta yeah, watch your logs. Havana gave us a heads up. There's a good deal of debris out here. And we're already starting to see some. I definitely got the best two hours uh, off to be able to do my meetings. because Carlin got the crappy two hours. Yeah, which wasn't too bad, but it was still pretty flat, but it there were big logs. Watch out for it. So as Carlin's running the boat, one of the things that I will do is just check some of the temperatures. Uh, obviously there's coolant temperatures. On diesel engines, that's probably, once your coolant temperatures go too high, you're in trouble. Uh, the bad things have already taken place. So what we take a look at is our exhaust elbows, uh, which are the kind of sprayers, the raw water uh, that helps cool the engine and it just gets ejected in the exhaust. Uh, and so we can keep an eye on those temperatures to see if they start rising. Generally speaking, that would mean that we have a problem. Uh, you know, one of the intakes is clogged or the cooling system might be clogged. Uh, we had the cooling system serviced uh, three years ago and obviously haven't, you know, we just do a cursory check as we're supposed to on an annual basis. But we take a look at those. As long as we're under 100 degrees uh, and those are fairly closely matched, we're in a good spot. Uh, right now, I've got 93 degrees on the port and 84 degrees on the starboard. Uh, and then the, the more important one, as well as temperatures go, is our exhaust gas temperatures. So EGT, uh, these boats don't come with those gauges. Uh, we have a video we put together where we have that, uh, we, we put those into at the boat when I had the exhaust elbows redone, I just put little bungs in and there are these probes that are high temp probes that go in. They're just right after the turbo and so it tells us what the exhaust gas temperature is. We, we generally on this boat when we're cruising, we're just over 700, uh, usually in the 730 area. The two engines vary by about 20, 15 to 20 degrees. My starboard engine is always a little bit warmer. Uh, it, it's always one of those things, it's like the, the downside of having two engines is one of them uh, always looks a little bit healthier and the other one looks a little less and you always scratch your head. Whereas if you just have one engine, you just think everything is great. Uh, but right now we're looking at 709 degrees on the port engine and 727 degrees on the starboard engine. Uh, two and a half percent, almost three percent difference, we, 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 just fine, we're fine. I would get more worried if we ever got up to like a thousand degrees or anything near that. I have all of our alarms set for about 850 degrees to go off and tell us that we should probably be thinking about that. But I check those because that gives us an idea is something starting to go wrong in the engines. That exhaust temp will tell us first. Right down to, and it's not even just the engines, obviously if there's something uh, starting to degrade in the engines, there's issues at the injectors, they'll start running hotter because they're less efficient. But the other one is if we bend a prop or a shaft, uh, you would know because the engine has to start working 
harder and therefore it's going to create more heat in the exhaust temp even though the coolant level is still sitting at about 185 degrees um, so that's where it's it's really important to look at these exhaust temps now once we're done looking at these temps i'll generally go down once every hour and a half or two hours and just take a physical look at the engine room do we have any leaks do we see anything that you know any weeping from our uh, dripless uh, uh, shaft seals it's ironic right looking for drips from our dripless shaft seals the garbage can get in there just a little piece of seaweed or anything that might do that obviously the races over time uh, and the face of, of those uh, they can't become corroded and they need replacing uh, on the seals but we're just looking for those types of things any indicator that something might be going awry and if we look for those things early we can deal with them long before they become an issue for us so let's head down to the engine room we're gonna put some ear protection on because it's freaking loud when we go down there How do I look? Do I look okay? so on a navigator you just drop right down into the lazarette right between the two fuel tanks and the first thing I like to take a look at is the shafts to make sure that they are running true and there's no vibrations I also check the dripless uh, seals you notice there was one drip there it was probably just a little piece of seaweed or something that fouled it for a moment but it wasn't dripping at all uh, you notice there's no vibration to the engines either that's something that's key that I look at and then I check the starboard dripless seal and it looks good as well so we go up to the front of the engine make sure that all of the belts look good you notice that sea strainer is actually spinning it was a broken sea strainer that i replaced so that make sure that nothing's getting into the impeller and then over on the starboard side i'm looking for the same thing all right well there we go everything looks pretty tidy down there there's no excess water in the bilge there is Tuck over the log boat, and it's a serious log boat. It's really far out there. Uh, they're cruising at one and a half knots for AIS, so we will go in front of them with a bunch of room because they are the stand on vessel. But this is something you see quite a bit up here in BC is all these log boats. That's where the lumber comes from. Harbor from Poets Cove and we left at 8.15 in the morning and it is 1.15. That's pretty good timing. So this is just going through the channel. We're going to get fuel, public dock, and they have space for a 50-foot boat on the public dock. Our first fill-up in Canada, about 570 liters. So about 1,500 bones. And that's Canadian, so eh, 1100 bucks or so. Not too bad. We then met up with our friends from Havana who are already on the dock at Madeira Park. They have nice facilities that overlook the marina. We then stocked up on some local seafood on the dock, as well as hit the local grocery store, which was just up the hill. We then went to the Grasshopper Pub, which was a short distance walk, which provided a beautiful view and an evening sunset for all of us to enjoy before we headed out the next day up to Chatterbox Falls. So we're off to Chatterbox Falls uh, on the Sunshine Coast, and as you can see, it's not very sunny today. Not a lot of sun today. Uh, we're going through Agamemnon. Agamemnon? We're going through. Agamem <laughs> Agamemnon Channel, <laughs> which will ultimately take us up uh, through to you know past Sydney Island. What do we else here? We'll do the Prince of Wales Reach. That's not the Prince of Wales Reach around. That's the Prince of Wales Reach, and that's going to take us up to the Princess Royal Reach. It's going to land us. 
at Queen's Reach, which is going to be Malibu Rapids. That's where it gets exciting. Yeah. Right now we're making about 10.3 knots. That's important to us because it's telling us we're going to get there in three hours, is what our charts say, following our particular speed as well as our route. Right now, what time it is, it's 9.17. So that's going to put us there about 12.17 doing that. Uh, and you want to be 30 minutes on either side of the tide exchange uh, or slack. And it's going to be a high when we get in there. So that you don't, uh, you don't get caught up in the rapids. Now, we only have a three and a half foot tide exchange today, so that's going to make it. We shouldn't have a lot of excitement in the rapids, but tomorrow's seven and a half when we leave. Might be a little sporty. Might be a little sporty. So it'll be really important that we're timing appropriately. We have our friends with us from Havana. We're burning about 0.6 gallons per nautical mile at 10.4 knots. We could go faster. We do our 15 and we burn about 0.6. This is right about the worst speed that we could possibly have, but that's right for the sweet spot for Havana. So, sorry, right. we're gonna hang out with them. Yeah, we'll uh, do the rapids together. That's right. It's good to keep uh, keep an eye on both boats. Redundancy in boats is great. Having redundant boats, even better. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll keep you informed, but right now, it's beautiful. A little bit of liquid sunshine. Yeah. But uh, the forecast is this will this will uh, fade away today, and we should be getting sun as well and we've heard that the Chatterbox Falls is uh, well it's gorgeous whether it's raining or whether it's sunny. Kind of a bucket list and someone was telling us that because of the rain the waterfalls should be amazing. Yeah. So. Somebody also said it's the largest waterfalls on the west coast which is amazing. I would have thought Snoqualmie Falls would have been up there. Here's a squall on the radar. We can tune that out as well, but here's the squall in real life. We saw it building about, I don't know, half hour ago. Radar isn't just good for other vessels, as many of you all know. We're just entering Jervis Inlet. Look at that. Even more liquid sunshine. So we're just off of Sydney Island. At uh, basically south of Goliath Bay is what's behind us, and our phones have no bars. The AT&T sims that we have in our pet wave are getting four bars, and let me check the other one, two bars. So I think that just kind of goes to point out that these these uh, 40G antennas that we put on on the hard top of the boat are really doing their job. This is not 5G, uh, they're obviously 5G antennas, but these modems that we have have the best uh, LTE modems in them as well. So the channels that they're picking up with just regular LTE uh, is really good. And these antennas that we have do a great job of picking it up. So we'll keep an eye out as we continue up uh, to Chatterbox Falls. I expect that there's a point where we don't get anything, but it would be remarkable if these pet wave 40G antennas were still able to grab cellular signal. So we'll keep an eye out, but uh, pretty impressive. And I'm still getting emails from work and uh, being able to keep up to date on all of that. Uh, we have the Starlink out on the back right now as well, but we don't use that in motion. We're entering Prince of Wales Reach, and we officially have no bars. This is where, doesn't matter how big your antennas are, you get nothing. A half hour before we get to Malibu Rapid. Here, look at the chart plotter. This is the radar picking up uh, a rain squall that's coming through. And if you look, uh, you'll notice you don't see much. So hopefully the visibility is a lot better when we get there because it would it would be terrible trying to go through these rapids. If you look at them, they're super, super narrow. And if we have zero viz, which right now, this entire rainstorm, the squall is sitting over, that could be an issue. The rapids, we only have 20 minutes on the front half of the, the tide change 
and 35 minutes after. So there's a lot of people that are going to uh, be trying to get through. And I've got a, a sixth boat that's a catamaran that's up in front of me right now. But it'll be a busy day uh, to get up there. If zero viz is what we have during this uh, very short window to get through the rapids, this could be a nail lighter. So before we go through the Malibu Rapids, John is going to start bringing in the whaler. And I don't know if he's going to side tie it or tie it to the back of the boat, but then that way it won't be swinging around in the rapids. So um, we got to secure that and bring it in a little bit more. So it'll be exciting because it is cloudy, it is foggy, and there's a lot of boats that are wanting to get through all at the same time. Security, security, security. This is the motor vessel Eliage. We are traversing the Malibu Rapids eastbound into Princess Louisa Inlet. Over. prepared. Patience. Even though it was foggy and rainy, we could see the falls. So now it was just a matter of trying to find a place on the dock, tying up the lines, and enjoying the beautiful falls. But just wait, the weather finally broke for us, which was amazing. The falls were overflowing because you can see as you go up the mountain that it was just flowing all the way from the top of the mountain and just feeding into the falls. It was beautiful. And thanks to Starlink, we had internet at Chatterbox Falls. Who would have thought? We had amazing download as well as upload. It was not what we expected. It was awesome. Yeah, the place is beautiful.
clouds finally cleared and the sun came out and we enjoyed the majestic scenery that was surrounding us. By the way, we're in uh, 80 feet of water. And all you can hear is waterfalls. I'm just in awe at this place. Is it crazy? Majestic. No other way to describe it. That's the uh, weed chatterbox. Now it's dinner time. Chatterbox Falls in the background. We're gonna go rage out to the rapids and see what's going on there and just take in the fall. beauty and all of its glory. And the crew from Havana. There they are. Let's go up to let's go check out the falls. Wow, look at the sun hitting them. I know, it's gorgeous. Yep. How deep is it? What do you think, baby? Amazing. All right? It's hard to capture everything. We're in 136 feet of water right now. <laughs> yeah, you can anchor here, yeah. And they have rings where you can do a stern tie. If you're an atheist, you should come here. It might change your mind. breathtaking. It's absolutely breathtaking. It, uh, everything I remember as a, as a kid and yet from the appreciation of an, being an adult, it's remarkable. I wish every one of you will have a chance to come up here and uh, see this. What do you think of Canada? Your first time in Canada. <laughs> Ended by rain, it was spectacular. Uh, now it's time to time to go. Now we're gonna go back through the rapids. Um, we're actually exiting a little bit late through the rapids, so we'll yeah. see how exciting that is. And this is a low tide, uh, so much more exposure yeah. on the shores than when we came in, which means less water underneath our gear. So That's right. it'll all be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I feel bad. There's a sailboat behind us that. Uh, actually behind Havana, that they're going to be probably 10 minutes behind us. So yeah. they're 20 minutes outside of the window, at least in Deception Pass. I've seen them turn right back around, not because they wanted to, but because the boat just <laughs> caught a current and that, that key elected like a rudder and flipped them back the other direction. As we were leaving the Malibu Rapids, there was a couple ski boats that were coming back to Malibu Club and it wasn't that bad we were blessed but we did learn you got to watch your tides and it's best to go at half moon not full moon and i can't wait to come back to chatterbox falls on a sunny sunny day Are we tilted? We can't tilt. Okay. Okay.